Hi, welcome to my first video for Maya. I will be teaching you about the Maya user interface uh, and I will teach you Maya in the most simplest and clear way so that you can understand Maya very well and enjoy using it. Okay, I'm using Maya 2012 and if you're using 2011 or 2010 then it should be very similar to it. Okay, let's get started. Okay, before I explain to you what all these icons do, the first thing you should always do is uh, create the project. The way you do that would be to go up here to File, and then you go down here Project Window. Okay. Now, if you're using 2011 or 10, it might not be similar. So what you do is you go File, Project, and you should have two links. We set right here, uh, Create Project or Set Project. You choose uh, Create Project, and then you get this pop-up window right here. So at the bottom, uh, you have a button, I believe it says uh, accept defaults, like that, or use default. When you click on that, you should have all the uh, all the folders created. Okay, and then so the first thing you should do is, um, since I know you, I'm using 2012, it, it, this might look different. Okay, the first thing you should do is uh, name the project, give it name, which wherever you want, but make sure you do not leave spaces, always do an uh, underscore, because Maya doesn't like... Uh, um, spaces so to create uh, the name you click right here new and you give it a name whatever project let's say my mm, my underscore project I give it underscore and here you choose the location you click this folder and usually I like to save it to the desktop and say select and then here you have all the folders and you hit accept since I already created uh, the project, so I don't, need to, I don't need to create again. So, for example, let me cancel it. If I minimize Maya, right here is my Maya project. Okay, if I go in there, I have all these folders which Maya created, and here's the scenes folder. Go in there, and here is where I will be saving all my Maya files. Okay, now let me close this one, reopen Maya. So why should you create the project uh, or set the project? Because whenever uh, you start on the project for school or for fun, like that, um, Maya will create all the necessary folders, folders for you. So that way you don't have to do it yourself. And Maya will save all the files into one location. Okay. So now the next thing is um, right here, you have this drop down menu. This one allows you to change your different modes. Like that. And so you can go for into, uh, from animation mode, polygon, surface, dynamics, rendering, etc. As you change the different modes, uh, the top menu here changes. Okay, for example, if I go to polygon, now they change, well, they didn't change the mesh. If I choose, let's say, animation, so now it's no longer polygon, it's animate geometry. If I pick, let's say, dynamics, so now it, the menus are different. Okay, this top area right here. It's called the um, Maya status, this whole top area. And this right here, where you see the, uh, the tabs and the icons, that's called the Maya uh, shelf. Okay. The Maya shelf will not change if you change the, uh, the, the two different modes. So they will always stay the same. Okay. So this icon is to create new Maya file. You can always hover them over them and it will tell you what the icons are. This is the open scene file. I click on it. Here's my computer, and here's the desktop. And look at the uh, hierarchy; it's always saved into the scenes folder. Okay, and you should check mark right here where it says ignore version. What that means is, if I'm using uh, 2012 and you're using 2011 or 10, then you should not have any problem opening it. Sometimes you might get an error message, but that's fine. So ignore version, and then you you pick whatever the file name, and you click on open. Okay, since I have nothing, I can't open anything. The next icon is to um, save. Okay, before you click on this icon, save, you should go in here, file, save scene as. Okay, and then you give a name. Let's say my underscore first project. Okay. Remember always do underscore and make sure you do not use cap locks because Maya becomes very buggy if you use cap locks. And the file types you should always save it as a Maya ASCII file. Okay. 
it's much better rather than save it as a binary so don't save as binary save it as a my ASCII file and you hit save as no it's save okay and right here it will tell you th that you have saved successfully saved and okay. the next icon right here um it's the object icon and this is the component icon i'll show you what that means if i'm right here on the polygon tab and i click the sphere hold down left mouse button and click drag it up okay now press 5 on your keyboard to go into shaded mode okay if i move put the mouse cursor over the object hold down right mouse button and let's say choose face now i go over to the move tool Select it, put your cursor away from the object, hold on left mouse and drag it to the low right, low right corner. Okay, now I can either move the individual arrows or I can move it in the center of the three arrows. That way I can move, move it in any direction. This is the component mode, okay. Another component mode would be to hold on right mouse button over the object and choose vertex. So again, I can click and drag. I can choose uh, all the vertices. Hold down right mouse button and choose edge. I can click one edge. If I want to select multiple edges, I hold down shift and click multiple edges. If I want to deselect them, I hold down control. Okay. So this is would be the component mode right here. To go back to the option, okay. So here's the component mode. You see right there. So right now I have the vertex selected. If I deselect, I click the component mode right here. If I, de if I deselect the component, um, the vertex, so now I cannot select them. If I enable the vertex, then I can select them. Okay, so this is the face mode right here. I enable it, disable this one, so now I can select the faces. And I can turn it off by clicking this icon, Now I can no longer select it. This is the edge mode, I select the edge. If I want to go back to the object mode, I click this icon. Now it goes back. Sometimes when you click on this icon, the object icon will not go back. Just click the component first and then go back. Another way to do that would be, let's say I go back to the component mode up here. And I have se um, edge selected. If I want to go to the object mode, another way would be to hold on right mouse button over the object and choose object mode. Okay, now you don't see anything until you click either on the object or away from the object. Like that. Make sure you click inside the object, you see highlighted. If you click outside the object, you deselect it. Okay, so this is the object mode, set by object type. This is to set by component type. Okay, so and again, the, the three main ones you should know is the vertex, the edge, and the face. Don't worry about all these icons like that. So the next icon is to uh, snap to the grid. If I select the object, hold down right mouse and choose go back to object mode. Click again. Okay, now I'm in the move tool. Okay, since I snap, enable this one, snap to grid. If I move it around in the center of the three axes, notice how it moves. It snaps to the grid. Okay, this is snap to a curve, but right now I don't have any curve selected, so. I can create a curve, go up here, okay, EP curve, and I click, 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 and drag, hit enter on your keyboard. So now if I select the object, and then and turn off this one, enable the curve. So now if I move the object, make sure the center of the three axes is right over the curve. Now if you try to move it, See now it snaps to it. So now it moves along the curve. Uh, so if you press four on your keyboard, you see wireframe mode. So right there, it's actually moving on the curve. It's hard to see. I know. Sometimes what you can do is hold on the middle mouse button, and you drag it along the curve. Okay, let me turn this off. Okay. Uh, again, don't worry about all these icons. This is the history icon. You should always leave it on. This is the render window. Click on it, it pops up the render window. If I click on this icon, it's to render. So now you see the object. 
Okay. I know it's dark. You can make it brighter by going over here. Clicking this icon right here. Okay, then I'll move this window over. Now when I click on that icon over here, it opens the attribute editor over here. Okay, so what you do is you um, scroll down right here. Scroll all the way down. Let me drag this one down. Okay, it might not work. Okay, scroll a little bit up until you see the word environment. Open up. And then you drag the slider over, let's say three quarter. Now you either click on this button, the render button, or you can click on this button right here, up here. Either one of them is fine. Click on it. Now the object is much brighter. Okay. So what's rendering for beginners? What, that, what does that mean? It means that uh, you outputting in a way that you can see it um, in real world like that. For example, like in the old days, there were no digital cameras. You had to uh, take your negative film to the store and have it developed, and that's what it is. Okay, so that's what rendering means. This one is uh, IPR, stands for Interactive Photo Realistic Rendering. What that means is if I change color on this one, then it will automatically change uh, in real time. Okay, so let me close this window. Select the object, press 5 on your keyboard, press F to zoom in. Okay, if I hold down the right mouse button over the object, and go down here to assign new material okay I can choose the blend click once now the object is uh, has a texture now if I double click this icon right here I can change the different colors let's say I pick red okay so now if I go back up here where it says IPR interactive photo photo with this rendering click on it so click on the IPR and you have to drag an, a square to uh, enable it so now if I drag the slider over here see how it gets darker and brighter in real time and that's what IPR stands for Interactive Photorealistic Rendering okay. so I can close this window anytime you want that win window to be open you click on this icon the next one is the render settings or render globals we call it click on that this windows allow you to output to different formats like JPEG, QuickTime Movie, PSD and also you can uh, change your different dimension you scroll down right here you can change to 720 by 480, 1K, 2K etc okay, that's the render global right here okay. So and, uh, these icons, don't worry about it. I will explain to them in the uh, tips and tricks video. Okay, I'm running out of time. Uh, so I will continue the rest of Maya in part 2. And thank you for watching.